Hi there, I'm Lee and welcome to I Mine Blocks. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you how to mine Monero on simplemining.net, otherwise known as SMOZ. So a couple of people are kind of going to be making this transition over. Um, I'm obviously one of them. The reason being is because of the threat of ASIC miners uh, coming onto the Ethereum network and also the reducing um, profitability of mining using GPUs on Ethereum. The secondary sort of factor is that uh, ASICs have basically been kicked off the Monero network. So now that's much more profitable to mine than it previously was. So there's kind of those two factors in play. So um, I'm actually going through the process of moving my miners from Ethereum across to Monero. I'm going to run it for a little while and see how the profitability is, um, how that plays out. I think the profitability um, for a while could be um, higher. So that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video, mining on Smoz and um, how to get that whole thing um, set up. So we'll start by opening up our browser. This is a Monero Explorer. So just to show you what it's reporting as the current hash rate. So it's currently at 521 uh, mega hashes. So that's important to note. There's also a secondary uh, kind of bit of information. Uh, another Monero Explorer. And we can see that the hash rate down here in this second sort of section. So this is a six month chart. So you can see it's been gaining, gaining, gaining. And the fork happened here. So you can see now the hash rate is kind of uh, depending on exactly which point you look at, it's anywhere between half and a third what it was previously. So quite a significant reduction. So that, what that means in other words is that it should be twice as easy to mine uh, for your GPU uh, mining rigs. So you should have done twice the money you was, um, you know, a month ago. So taking a look at simplemining.net or SMOZ, and I'll show you how to set up your miners for mining Monero. So when you log into your SMOS account, you're going to have something that looks like this. So this is kind of like the main dashboard and you can see I've got three uh, mining rigs. So the top two, the two GTX ones are currently mining Monero already. So you've got this one here, GTX 1060, and it's currently on this mining group. The one that I'm going to be changing is this mining sky rig. So that's actually a AMD rig. And I'm going to be showing you how we're going to move that across to uh, from Ethereum to Monero. So this guide, you can use it for AMD and also NVIDIA GPUs. We're going to be using the um, XMR stack miner. So that's um, compatible with both types of hardware. And um, so let's continue on with that. So what we need to do is this one here, we're going to create a new mining group for it. So if you go onto the rig groups tab on the left hand side, and then we're going to add a group. So it asks us which miner that we want to use. So we're going to use this one here, which is this XMR stack miner. Make sure you're using the, the more recent version. So I think it needs to be at least 2.4. Uh, if you use the older version, it won't have the uh, latest algorithm, which is Monero 7. Um, you need that um, to mine on the new fork. If you use the old one, it, it essentially won't work. So we're going to select this miner. And then we need to do our configuration. So the group name, I'm just calling it XMR uh, demo. You can leave the description or you can enter it. It's up to, up to you guys. And then we've got the minor options. So it kind of pre-fills part of it by default. So what you're going to need is your pool address, the pool that you're mining to, and also your Monero wallet address. So I've got those in a notepad here. I'm going to be mining to the nano pool. Um, I've only just started with it, so I can't really comment on um, how reliable it is and things like that. Just kind of getting started uh, with nano pool. I've not really used them before. So we've got our pool address anyway, and then we're just going to kind of replace it uh, with this section here. So sorry, just to be clear, so the way it's done is, um, I'll kind of zoom in on something so you guys can see this a little bit better. But you've got the call to the algorithm, and then you've got dash O, and then you've got the pool, and then you've got a colon, and then you've got your port number. And then the next part is our Monero address. So I'm gonna copy that as well. Go back to the minor. And then you save, then you've got hyphen U space, and then you've got this bunch of X's so you want the space and then we're going to paste that 
at the end of your address you can add this is optional by the way you can add a uh, period or full stop and then you can add a worker name so I'm going to call this one mining sky so what that means is that if you've got multiple rigs mining on the same Monero address you can kind of differentiate which one is which and then you've got dash p space x so that is the password field um, by default you won't you won't require a password so you can just leave that as x so we're going to add that add that as our new group so that's been created and if we go back to the rig list you want to select the mining rig that you want to change or move it from one minor program to another and then you want to assign a group so at the moment it's currently assigned to this AMD group which is an, an Ethereum mining uh, group but we're going to change it to this XMR-demo so that's the group that we just created um, you can use reload I prefer to do a full reboot if I'm kind of changing the miner uh, and algorithm completely it will take a little bit longer for it to, the miner to restart back up but um, I prefer to do it that way so then we'll just give that a minute um, basically for the miner to reboot and restart and then we'll kind of get a notification um, up in here okay our miner has now rebooted so we can start getting some information from it you'll see a slight summary in this section here but if you click on the console option you'll get slightly more information so um, I've actually got this error with all of my uh, miners at AMD and also the Nvidia miners about this memory allocation but that doesn't seem to affect it too much um, after that point you should the miner should uh, continue and start running normally So what you should see is that it's probably easier for me to show you one of the other miners. Uh, one of the things that I don't like about it, and I'll explain now. So what you should see is new blocks that are being detected by the miner. So that is uh, the pool basically saying there's a new block each time. And you should want to see these results accepted by the pool. So results accepted by the pool, so on. So basically every time you see results accepted by the pool that means you're submitting your work share to the pool and it's and it's been accepted so that's what you want to see um the thing that i don't like about this minor console is that it doesn't show you um a reported hash rate i haven't been able to do it in a way that shows the um the hash rate of the miner within this mining console i mean there's probably somewhere that you can do it in the options but i haven't discovered that yet so you'll only see your um, hash rate on the pool end. You won't be able to see it in, in the miner window, which is um, a little bit of a, a pain. You can see the other miner now. So the one that we've just set up, if we go to the console now, now you can see that. It's the same thing. Uh, we've connected to the pool and we are submitting results or submitting shares to the pool itself. So let's uh, take a look at the NanoPool um, dashboard or the interface. So if you go onto this website, uh, xmr.nanopool.org, and if you enter your address into the top right hand or the search box and search it, you'll get a summary which looks like this. If I just hit the refresh, you'll be able to see kind of how, how things are going on. So you can see the calculated current hash rate is just gone down. That's where the other mine has kind of gone on and off. You will see over time that this fluctuates and then over um, a longer period of time, it will balance uh, things out. And further down, you can see we've got our workers here. So this is what I was saying about separating them. If you have the uh, full stop and then the worker name, this is where you'll see those workers displayed. So you can have multiple workers using the same address. And it kind of breaks out um, exactly how they're responding. The hash rate, um, again, it does fluctuate quite a lot. So it's probably a better uh, reading to kind of look at your submitted share to kind of get a, a better understanding of how it's uh, processing your work and how that's going on. There is also a um, calculator. So I've really just got started with this and this is based on a six hour uh, average. I'm only really just coming up to that six hour average and I haven't had my full um, hashing power on that. So um, I need to let that run a little bit more for, um, to get a, a, better, a, a better average over time. You can see up here that the current six hour average is 6,700 hashes. And um, my true hash is probably about double that. So I'm kind of expecting to double. But based on the six hour average, you can see the earnings in dollars is like $208. Um, so I think um, 
once that average has balanced out and the miners have stabilized a little bit, I think that will be sort of over 400. Um, in comparison to Ethereum, I was probably getting about 350, something like that. So it looks at the moment to be um, slightly more profitable than mining Ethereum. And there's still a lot more optimizations and tweaking and stuff like that to do. I haven't done any of that yet, whereas Ethereum is kind of very um, optimized um, for that process. Uh, one other point to mention as well is that uh, the Monero algorithm is also quite power efficient. So what you will find is that your miners, um, not only um, are they gonna be um, hashing, you might be earning a, a higher income possibly, but your miners will be using less electricity. So maybe that's something that might be useful, um, something that's worth considering. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that here. For now, um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave those in the comments area below and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I do put out content like this on a regular basis. It'll be great to have you as part of our community. And um, you know, I'd really like you guys to get involved, particularly in the comments and you know, sharing your thoughts and ideas on all of this kind of stuff. And um, you know, give it a like if you haven't done so already. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.